So she's asking me, what did you do on your first meeting? Hey guys, welcome back. It's me again, Jess and Travis. <laughs> when is it okay to roam freely at his house like when you meet yeah them, so of course when i first met you i i kept an eye on you make sure you weren't a scammer or something trying to steal from me what? Um, or maybe i'm a i'm a no diva <laughs> So I'm gonna steal something from you. Yeah, I I Maybe think you that's a trust thing, and you just have to gauge the trust with the partner you're with. You know, do you trust do you them? Think I'm on our first meeting, do you think I'm gonna steal your stuff? No, what? no, just really? based on your character. Unless you were a really fantastic liar and you got past me, I don't think you had the mentality. You didn't have the characteristics of a thief. Or a liar. So, I deal with thieves and liars a lot. And you did not have any characteristics of a thief or a liar. So, I wasn't really worried with you. But you do get some people. You're like, you know, like, when you have that gut feeling, you're like, ooh, I don't really trust this person. You know, if I had that gut feeling, i watch you like a hawk. But I didn't have that feeling with you. So, so what I disappoint you, babe? Like, what disappoints you in... In... Other, for example, what kind of characteristic disappoints you or turn you off? Someone who's lazy. Um, someone who doesn't want to learn something new. Uh, I think most people, yeah. So lazy, the, un the unwillingness to learn, the unwillingness to adapt, uh, the unwillingness to live a healthy lifestyle. And, you know, I hate to always bring it back to religion, but... You know, Yahweh gave us one body, one life. We get one chance to do it all right. And a lot of people do it so wrong. So why not live your best life? Be healthy. Be fruitful with your knowledge. You know, knowledge, a lot, I mean, the cliche saying is knowledge is power. But why not learn something new every day, even if it's one thing? Every day, and then that, after 365 days, you have 365 new things that you learned. And I think that's just a great mentality to have. Uh, and I think that if you have a partner like that, that shares that mentality, that wants to learn, wants to be successful, that's a power couple. And when I mean a power couple, meaning you guys think alike and you guys will move forward and move mountains together. What about you? Do you want to ask me something about Anna? About Anna? Do you want to ask me on our first meeting what I think about you? Like yeah. That? Did you... Did you what did you think about me on our first meeting? Did you trust me? Were you suspicious? Were you worried? Um, or or because of what I told you about me, did you inherently trust me more? I mean, I'm afraid at first because I don't know. Because it, it feels like you're suspicious like that. So on our first meeting, but you tested me. And then after that, it feels like um, it gives me, ano, yung, ano ba yun? It awakens me that, oh, he's different. Like, he's different from other guy. Um, it makes you more, for me, it makes you more, ano ba yun? Babe? It makes you more unique. Yeah. Like that. Special. Yeah, it makes you more unique. And then, you're I probably think about like, it that, you're probably like, what the heck? This guy yeah. made me buy my own food? Yeah. And I think about that. What if he, if he did that to other girls, maybe more girls will be disappointed with him. So I'm gonna, I'm still gonna talk to him after that because he's tough. <laughs> yeah. He challenged me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. and it's it's true. Um, like if you're dating a Western girl, they inherently expect, they expect yeah. that the man will give them whatever, and I think that is yeah. absolutely absurd. There is no way mm. that I should have to just out of whatever freaking 1950s freaking thought process they're coming from that I should have to give them all of my hard works earnings to make them happy. Yeah. I don't think so. I think so. a lot of uh, yeah, I think a lot of people once they knew the person at the first meeting, especially when they they you know like turn off 
with him or her, like they're gonna stop. Oh yeah. Of that situation. Like diba? oh he didn't buy Most my meal. Are like that. Screw yeah. this guy. He didn't give yeah. me a free meal. Like. And then, I, yep. and here I am, I'm thinking, oh, she expects me to do everything for her. Yeah, that's not the woman yeah. I want to be with. Yeah, because some people just want to test you and you don't know more about him or her. Debate. Yeah. That's why you need to get to know more about that person like that. For yeah, sure. Yeah, I think there's no problem meeting you by that first time, only the... Well, I mean, you brought your bodyguards. <laughs> I mean, there is no problem after that because I know that you tested me lang. I knew yeah. it. I knew it. I knew it talaga. That's why I texted you after that. I still text you. And then when, by the time that you asked me that, are you disappointed? Or am I... I mean, did I disappoint you of what I did? Like, yeah, I, 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 I was just wondering how you felt about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think that's all our questions for that we wanted to ask you as an American or as a Western babe, because most Filipino wants to know about that. Yeah. So I'm going to give some tips lang. Okay. So these are the... Because I have one friend that I talked with last week. So she's asking me, what did you do on your first meeting? Are they tough? Are they... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you some tips, guys, for your first meeting, especially you don't know uh, more about that guy. So what I did is, when I visit Travis, um, for for me to win his heart. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? You cook, you cook for me. Yeah. No, 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 no. At first, you are, you are cooking for me, babe. Yeah. At the first, uh, no first day because I don't want to remember I don't want to touch anything of your stuff right? that's right you're afraid because, to touch yeah. my stuff yeah I'm afraid and then what did I do on our first meeting guys so every time I go to Sasebo so um, from Nagasaki to Sasebo I bought some fruits strawberries apples and it's one hour more almost two hours travel Diba? Almost yeah. two hours and then I bought some fruits just to give it to him like that. So um, that's the one thing that I that I did on our first meeting. And then like um, after maybe after a one month, that's the time that I I can do some stuff in your house, like folding your clothes. Diba? Yeah, she would she would look at <laughs> my really she would look at my dresser and be like did she just throw yeah. all this stuff in there? It's and I'm like, messy. well, not exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's very messy. You can do some stuff, guys. Like washing the dishes is it's not a bad thing, deba. Right? So it's let's not, let's touch on that. It's not a big issue. That goes into the love languages. Like, so for you, I know Jess's love language for me is acts of service. She will mm -hmm. do the dishes, help you know, help with the dishes, help around the house, help clean help make food that's acts of service and for me i came from a relationship where i didn't get any acts of nothing so that was a big deal for me because after a long day at work and i can come home and things are clean and dinner is made you just i mean you got you won my heart like, that's crazy um yeah. that's that acts of service is is the, and then for jessa she likes her like um uh, physical touch and you know like personal time like spending time together so my acts of service is we like going to Netflix we like going to the gym together we like doing those things together you know um, but whatever we can do is bonding time so there's five love languages definitely should read them but everyone relates to one of those or more yeah I must say that if you are good at something like cooking why not to cook for him deba? Right? Why not to cook for him or or whatever you are good good at and because for them it feels like you are taking care of you are taking care of for them deva right? yeah they and are very just you know but, a, a, like men in general still want to be loved right like anyone yeah. else so you have to remember with with men it's a little different so we don't you know it, it's it's crazy because a lot of men you know we don't get the attention that girls always get right you go out mm -hmm. you're pretty because you're a girl you get all this attention you don't really need to do anything right 
You don't have to do anything. Everyone offers you their attention. You go to a bar, they buy you a drink. You go to the store, you're going to get looked at. You're going to get compliments. You go, you know, if you're at the beach, you're going to get compliments. Does that happen to a guy? No. I go to a bar. I'm either alone or I buy my own drinks, right? I go to the store. You think anyone talks to me? No. Go to the beach. Anyone talks to me? No. You think I get looked at? Maybe. Probably not, though. Not like a woman does. If a, a woman needs one thing, if you have makeup, everything is at your disposal because everyone is drawn to you. They're drawn to you. Yeah. yeah automatically. So... You know, again, it's much easier, I think, for, for a woman, right, to get that type yeah. of attention. So when you give, all a man wants is that reciprocated, that love, that understanding, and that want. Like, showing that you want them or need them, that's it. Especially with those acts of service, to me, it'll be immediate. You know, of course, you have all different circumstances, but men still just want to be loved and they have a heart too um and when you reciprocate that it'll go a long way yeah is it hard for you to love someone you babe, because you are you have a past relationship but because you are no divorced is it hard mm -mm. for you no no because it like is. i said a lot of those relationships the reason why they end up in a divorce is because something wasn't something wasn't happening in the relationship right and then what happens is when you start having a relationship where you build animosity in it, you know, so say I, you say you worked hard every single day and I, I had like a half, I only worked half the day, but when you came home after working 12, 13 hours, nothing was done. No food was made. I wasted your money that you're making and I just didn't care. And that happens every single day. And then you ask me, Hey, can you please help around the house? You know, could you please help me with my lunch tomorrow? And I do nothing. I don't help you. I don't do anything. I don't make the, I don't do the laundry. I won't make you food. I just sit there and I take advantage of you because I know you work and I know you make money. You start to hate that person. You will start to yep. hate them. Now that love turns into animosity and hate and almost like you're disgusted to be around that person. Like, mm -hmm. I cannot believe I live with that person. A lot of those are what the circumstances that happen in these relationships, because one person is giving everything. And then this person is taking everything. But there's remember relationships is 100% by both people. It's not 50 yeah. 50. It's 100 and 100. Always. And I think a lot of relationships end because there's such a big gap missing such selfish, a big yeah well, selfish then, whatever selfish. you know like for me i hate doing dishes but you don't mind doing them you know and mm -hmm. um but it, you wash the dishes <laughs> yeah you wash the dishes too i wash yeah, the dishes and and, you, yeah. and do different things i let him wash yeah you know i told him i wash today you have to wash the dishes tomorrow yeah like that. so you are thankful that you found me, huh? Yeah, it's a shared... <laughs> relationships are a shared responsibility. It's shared. Yeah. So you're happy that you found me, babe. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, we could talk a lot about relationships. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because... I mean, so, Jessa... Uh, yeah, I... She gets mad at me all the time. We fight all the time. We just fought, like, 30 minutes ago because I was trying to give her constructive <laughs> criticism. I, I told her... I, I, I will tell you what. Filipinas are not good with constructive criticism. They take it as an insult when it is not. Because sometimes you, it feels like you are yelling. It's not. Right? It's not. It, yeah, I know. It's constructive. But it feels like you are yelling, babe. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, sometimes you, you interpret it as a bad thing, but it's not. If I'm trying to help you, and sometimes when someone's helping you, your voice will get excited a little, a little louder, like, like, hey, yeah, we got You should really try it this way because this is this is going to help you in the long run. Um, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, sometimes if you if you really marry um, American, get used to their. Um... <laughs> we project a louder yeah, we sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But. So, so yep, I think that's it, babe, for our video today. Yep. I hope you learned something on this video, guys. Thank so if you, you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, 
leave them in the comments below and we will address them on another video so leave tons yeah. and tons of comments and we will we will answer those questions to the best we can yeah so we made this video because um i think it's helpful and most filipino wants to know about this topic and about your opinion as an american there are yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for watching. See Thanks, you everybody. Again on our next vlog. Bye. Bye.